So from a theologian's point of view, what is the purpose of hope and how do we understand that in the context of troubled well, times? Yeah, in our tradition, hope is an act of the will. It, and, and despair is an act of the will. These are acts of the will. I mean, obviously, setting aside mental illness and things like that, this is something different. But, but these, these are actually understood to be choices uh, that people make. Um, and there's something, hope, I mean, I think Emily Dickens says very beautiful when she said, you know, hope is the bird with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words. It's something that it's not rational. It's, it's, you know, it sings the tune without the words. It's, it's not rational and never stops at all. And, and then she goes on to say, and, and you know, it's sweetest in the gale is heard. You know, it's, it's s sweetest when the times are difficult and, s and foul must be the storm that could abash the little bird. You know, what a wretched condition when it, it causes it abash here, like lose faith right. in it. it right. when, so th conditions that create despair are, are evil conditions. That's why I think the idea that we're dealing with radical evil is a very important concept, um, that, that this is something, because despair is evil, right. and, and to take that away from, from people consciously, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to, and to know what you're doing uh, is, I don't think there's any darker force. And, and in our tradition, Iblis is the one, Eblesa, he despaired. Mm -hmm. And that's why the demonic force, for those of us who believe in supernatural realms, there's nothing to, that delights the demonic force more than despair. Despair of a spouse from, from his or her spouse. Is, is They exalt in it, and it creates a kind of excitement. And there's human beings that share in this, that people who have, have fallen into real malice, because one of the things in, in, you know, with these deadly sins, and I think a lot of what we're dealing with in this book is about it's deadly sins idea. that we don't look at anymore. Deadly sins have, they have daughters. Ghazali pointed this out, and Aquinas, and one of the, for instance, one of the daughters of greed is a lack of empathy. Right, you have that, to have that. that. that yeah. you, when you become greedy, you, you lose sight of the suffering of other people. You know, from, from our perspective, again, if you lose sight of the journey, right. that we're on a journey, yeah. and, and our hope is in the afterlife, if you put your hope in this world, this world will betray you because it's embedded in the very nature of the world to let you down. It was not designed, and that's the Marxian fallacy that we can create heaven on earth. The, the world was not designed for heaven on earth, uh, for people of faith who believe that it's beyond this. But we should do everything we can to mitigate the symptoms of the world that cause suffering and, and work towards that end. And, and that's why the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, in the greatest testimony of hope, he said, if the end of time comes and you are planting a seedling, if you're able to finish planting it, and the, and, and, and the meaning of that story is beautifully embodied in a story of, uh, of Abu Yusuf on his deathbed, one of the great um, jurists in Islam. And he was learning a, uh, a, a, a point of jurisprudence. And one of his students said, you're on your deathbed, why are you doing this? He said, I would rather meet God knowing this knowledge than being ignorant of it. <laughs> and, and that's, I think, where real true hope Mm -hmm. is not hope in this world because y y things can happen. Things break down. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Those, all those things happen, and when they happen, you have to have the fortitude, the spiritual fortitude to deal with it. And uh, in, in, in Baqarah, in 155, the Quran says, we will test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and loss of life and loss of, of fruits. So give glad tidings to the patient ones. Why are they patient? Mm -hmm. Because they have hope that there's meaning in these tribulations. And once you remove meaning from people's lives, despair is the only answer. The idea that you need to have patience and stillness, um, it seems like a prescription for inaction. That's not what you're saying though, right? Not at all. And, and, but my point is there are a lot of people that are activists mm -hmm. and people that are out there 
that there's deeper pathologies working in those people. And, and if, they have, if they're not doing spiritual work at the same time, then either they burn out, fall into despair, and very often they have, I mean, there's a, there's a great thing that, uh, that uh, I think it's Emerson talks about, you know, these people shouting in, in Boston about the slavery in Barbados. And he said, and they treat their wives miserably. You know, that there's a lot of people that have mm. these concerns out there, but they're neglecting their children. They're neglecting their, their, their duties in front of them. And this is where sphere of concern and sphere of influence are very important. Those distinctions are very important. Mm -hmm. what, what, what can we actually change? Because I always want to hear, tell me what to do. But, but when, when you don't give people actually tangible things that they can actually do, um, then, then it becomes, it's just an obsession with something that uh, is very unhealthy for them spiritually. Mm -hmm.